It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Today, so there was a few headlines. Uh, one headline of the Jonesboro Sun uh, detailed a lawsuit against a Republican GOP senator. That Republican senator is John Cooper. Uh, the plaintiff in the case uh, is uh, businessman uh, Chad Neal. Chad joins us in studio. Uh, Chad, good to have you back on the program, sir. Hey, good morning, Paul. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this. I mean, I know, obviously I don't know as much as you, but why why, why are you suing uh, Senator John Cooper? Well, it's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's obviously a last resort ditch effort just to stop him from harassing me and my company. I mean, you know, he, he won the election, and he just can't get over it. Uh, immediately after he became a uh, senator, my customers throughout the state started getting requests led for legislative audit. To remind everybody, you, you, you ran against Cooper in a primary right. for that seat four, right. four years ago. That's right, four yeah. years ago. And I take issue with the Jonesboro Sun saying this is political because that was four years ago. It's not political. And when John Cooper and, and his uh, one of his henchmen were, Ray Hackworth filed ethics charges against myself and Billy Sue. Uh, it wasn't political in the Jonesboro Sun. I had done something wrong, which was proven that I did not, and it was all just frivolous and, and just more attempts to harass us. So anyway, um, customers have just continued through, through his last four years to, to get legislative audits, just asking for contracts, how much money they make, how much money inmates spend with us, which inmates don't spend any money with us. It's the county's money. Um, and he's not uncovered anything because there's nothing there to uncover. But it gives the impression that to, to people that are doing business with us that, well, wow, you're getting legislatively audited. What, what have you done wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and nothing. But it's just that impression and the harassment that, that's, you know, unfortunately, I've just, we could have filed this during the session, but we know he would have fought it. And, um, and we just had to refile. So we've waited this long to do it yeah yeah so the um talk a little bit about the 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 history here i mean i i, I to me i i have seen just from a distance the craighead county republican committee which you're a member of yes you're involved in and so senator john cooper and there seems to be a divide in that committee i mean you know and i think we can all admit it and be and be congenial about it there seems to be you know, some people who are maybe more conservative, uh, and John Cooper would call them the Tea Party types, which right. he doesn't like, uh, right. openly is stated multiple times, even though that's who elected him. Absolutely. And, and that's who knocked doors for him, which is, uh, that's a whole other argument. But, um, and then maybe maybe the more establishment types, is does that have anything to do with this here? Maybe your influence in the committee? <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, when you say divide, you think of something maybe 50-50. And I just think there's a small handful of people in the committee that are split, um, and and John and those are the people that hang their hat on with Cooper. Um, good for them. I mean, a lot of people in these committees are there for personal reasons. They're looking for appointment or something like that. So naturally, you got to be nice to him because he's the, he's the guy that that has the power to get you that or not. Yeah. And so uh, unfortunately, people. Uh, maybe have a false liking to him, I would say, just because they have to to get what they want. Right. And it's unfortunate that people can't just stand up for their principles and say, hey, this is the way it is and this is the way it isn't. And right, right. Forget you. And I'm one of those guys. <laughs> you know, I'm going to stand up for my principles and I'm not going to a cow down to anybody. And yes, we've had some issues in the committee. I was, uh, I was the, uh, the uh, chair of the uh, our rules committee. And, and several times we've gone in the committee, and, and John's on the committee, and we'd we'd agree to do something, and then when we bring it into the in, into the to the to the committee, uh, he'd throw a monkey wrench in it, and and want to vote for something totally different, which is not what the committee's for. You should hash that out in committee. Yeah. You know, and he'd always lose, and so that was another burr in his side. So uh, it, it's. It's, it's just those kind of issues. <clears throat> so you're audited uh, in a way every year, right? Um, just is my it, company. Uh, yeah, your company. We have you have state, tiger corrections. Yeah, right? you have state auditors that come in and audit. That's what I, The yeah. financial accounts for the sheriff's departments. Right. And so they're audited every year, and, okay. and our software, in large part, was designed to appease them. Okay. Because back early on, when I started 23 years ago, 20 years ago, that really didn't occur that much. And then when they started. Uh, auditing them 
they would say, hey, we'd like to see this report. We want to see the numbers done like this. And so we've always appeased them and, yeah. and, and worked with them and, and, and give them software demos and made sure that it was acceptable to their standards. So what specifically, I mean, I know Senator Cooper starts uh, sending letters with official Arkansas State Senate letterhead. Yes. And and you think that that made it look like y'all you, you were under some sort of investigation? You would think, yes. Well, anytime the the uh, uh, legislative audit starts calling customers, it throws up a red flag. Right. I'd have sheriffs call me and go, well, who have you made mad now? Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, specifically in the suit, you m yeah. mentioned uh, the Bureau of Legislative Research, yeah. right? The BLR? Yeah. yeah. So he was using them as yes. well? Yes, yes. That's, uh, that's what we that's what we that's what we think right and and you know this is going to be hard to prove because um i mean we have proof that he's he's used his own letterhead and 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 we know that it was him behind this but now if the shoe was on the other foot like when he goes out to craighead and wants a copy of my contract and i don't want to give it up then i've got something to hide so now you watch he's going to hide behind every uh privilege afforded him as an elected official to not have to give information to clear this up at, at the whole time saying he didn't do anything wrong but you watch how secretive and and all the all the stuff that he's going to try to pull we know he's going to try to get thrown out thrown out right off the bat and that's not going to happen we think we have strong evidence to, to move the case forward yeah and uh and we'll just see what happens so from there. aside from the letterhead i mean i've seen some of the the stuff that's public so what what, what other evidence well, obviously, it's an ongoing case, and we don't want to show our hand okay. right now. Okay, <laughs> so, I got you. I right. got you. So, uh, uh, but but we, uh, you know, there's there's there'll be testimony. There'll be things that uh, that we'll bring that, that shows that uh, even the letters that he wrote um, in the ethics complaints uh, against myself and Billy Sue just flat out uh, falsehoods, yeah. just made up, conjured up stuff. I mean, I, w I read one, uh, exhibit two that I, I thought it was interesting, uh, from Senator Cooper. Uh, he, he seemed to disparage your success as a businessman or seemed to say things about Billy Sue, who in Craighead County, Billy Sue Hoggard's a Republican pioneer in terms of the work that she's done about how, uh, you know, he makes some allegation how she was infatuated with the money and yeah, everything it's else. Just ridiculous. It's, but it's personal and, and, and it it's, is it's, it, it and, makes everything and personal. it just seems very odd for a senator to, to well you would think that a person in that position would would be above that they could they could show some statesmanship and he's just in my opinion been incapable of that through this whole process uh and, and that's just false billy and sue and i go back over 20 years i mean i was actually friends with her when she was running against dustin mcdaniel wow uh, state rep okay wow. so i've known her since then we've my my family has, has babysitter kids my daughter's babysitter kids and so when we went on that and and she's had no influence at all over any of my contracts at Craig kids she's not on the finance committee um she had no oversight over any of it didn't know anything about them and we'd never even discussed it we're such good friends I often forget that she's even she was even on that yeah the, the corn court yeah so do you do you think are you would you say that part of the reason maybe you're fought you filed this lawsuit against senator john cooper is just to say is to just say hey listen like i i want to be left alone That's i mean if you, if you accomplish anything I mean, if you win, great. But even if you lose, maybe you'll be left alone. I, I, who, I don't know. With, with John, he holds grudges against everybody, so uh, you know he just needs to let it go. And and hopefully he'll leave me alone. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, moving forward, if the pattern continues, we've got we can we can add to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we we've got the lawsuit. If he continues after that then he'll have to get somebody else to do it for him which yeah. he's good at that we're talking with businessman uh, chad neal uh he's the owner of uh, tiger corrections um and uh you do business not with the state but you do business with with, with the counties the counties just with counties that's right no state business yeah um and so he's filed a lawsuit against senator john cooper for essentially what you know what i can tell is uh you know harassment um you, you you know is essentially what you're saying that's true and uh, i mean talk, can you can you talk a little bit about the uh cuz in one of those letters i read with cooper he talked about some christmas party he seems he can't get over a christmas party he, he, he just can't and uh, <laughs> I, I don't i don't understand it um isn't it so petty it is it's, it's just like, really petty there's a christmas party and he that's didn't right. like it was at your house and he didn't like that it was at your it house. was it was the first christmas party that we were having <laughs> Uh, right after the election, okay, 
And I don't know if he viewed this as his coming out party because we had uh, the state chairman was going to be there. Some other elected officials from around the state were going to be there. Can I make a disclosure real quick? Sure. In that race, I, I was strongly supportive of Cooper because I believed him. I believe. Oh, I understand. I, I, I believe. I just want everyone to know this. Yeah. Right? I was wrong about that. Like, John Cooper was not who he campaigned to be. No, he wasn't. And I just want to point that out. And, um, and I already knew that, and that's why I ran. <laughs> but And I knew that my chances of winning were slim to none. And that's why, you know, I got I got abused for spending all the money I did, but that's the only option I had in, a, in such a short period of time because he'd already ran for state office. He'd already ran for, for the House. And then he'd been going door-to-door -door for six months. So to overcome overcome that in a, uh, in a special election was yeah just almost yeah would have been phenomenal but, but, but anyway i'm sorry so but, back yeah. back to the party so there's a party and you know for the craighead county republicans is your house and he got upset and so that. if you've ever ran for office before you know um well you don't even have to run for office to know this that our wives are our biggest defenders and my wife was just so upset with with him and his wife just the the, the flyers that he put out the comments that he'd constantly made she knew me and she knew that they were not true and sh she was physically ill about them coming to our house and uh, didn't want them there and uh i kept putting it off i put it off for weeks because i just i knew that if i'd uh, uh said anything to john early about it he'd have tried to split the committee and have a, another party somewhere and i didn't want that to happen yeah. so I, I intentionally waited till the last day i mean at, like at noon and the party was that night and i called him and i said john this is chad neal he's like yeah chad how's it going i said great i said listen i said i I said, we need to discuss this party. I said, um, I think in light of the, the, the heated uh, battle that we had here and in light of some things that were said, I said, it might not be a good idea if you come to the party tonight. And he said, well, do you have a problem with it? And I said, no, I do not. I said, but if you come into my house, my wife is liable to beat you up with a baseball bat. Yeah. And I laughed because it was a joke. It, it, exactly. It yeah. was a joke. Yeah. And he laughed and said, well, we don't want that, do we? And I said, absolutely not. And he said, well, I understand. And uh, he said, you take care. And that was that. Well, three seconds later, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a call from Curtis Coleman, who, you know, at the time was running for governor. Yeah, he was right. coming. And so first call he made was to Curtis crying. And uh, uh, he said, hey, what's going on? I said, well, Curtis, I told you, the, you know, the guy was <laughs> about the situation. And uh, I think it was just I told him my wife was just physically ill about him being at my house. She didn't want him here. And I just had to, I had to do what I had to do. It wasn't yeah. anything personal. It really wasn't. Yeah. And, Things uh, are still too hot. Yep. They're just too hot at the moment. Yep. And uh, <laughs> so he's like, hey, I understand. And uh, yeah, I, I think John just viewed it as his coming out party at the prom or something. I don't know. His coronation. Yeah. Something like that. And we just would never. And, and now it's to the point that anytime he writes anything about it or says anything about it, you know, we were going to take him out back and string him up and shoot him. You know, right. he, he feels physically threatened now. Yeah, like it was a legitimate threat. Well, like it was it, really like, just like a It was just an off-the-cuff, just hey, a listen, joke. If you don't mind, my, we, it'd be yeah. hard, it's going to be hard on my wife. That's right. You know, yeah. And that's all it was. And I've had him at my house since then. And I've acknowledged him. You know, had him lead the group in prayer. And uh, still, he just can't. He can't get over it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's and it's just it's it shouldn't be in that kind of position and be uh, that vindictive. Yeah. You, you just shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, and, and and at this point, from your standpoint, I'm I'm summarizing what you, you you correct me if I'm wrong. You think that he's abusing his the power of his office to now harass a private citizen? Absolutely. Okay. No doubt about it. And that's why this that's why this lawsuit's happening. That's right. Well. Keep us posted. I mean, we'll be following it. I wanted to give I wanted to give you the opportunity to speak the truth and 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 you know get out there because something tells me I don't know if there's other media outlets that are going to do the same. Yeah, <laughs> just a, who knows? Just a thought. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, Chad, it's great to have you back. You on, too, sir. And appreciate uh, what you do yeah. and, and keeping everybody informed. We'll we'll, treat, we'll keep trying. I appreciate, I appreciate you coming it. on the show. All right, thanks, Chad Neal. Everybody, <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break and a reset here, and we'll be back in just a moment. Russellville-based firearms manufacturer Omega are making clones of the most notable German firearms in the world. These delayed roller lock firearms have been and are currently used by law enforcement and military worldwide. At Omega, they manufacture their guns right here in Arkansas and produce the best reproduction in the marketplace that comes with a complete five-year warranty. At Omega, they take firearm manufacturing seriously and offer discounts to active and retired law enforcement. Whether you're using Omega firearms to defend the public, defend your family, or for target practice, Omega has your back. For pricing, go to Omega-Guns.com. That's Omega-Guns.com. 
Are you a conservative-minded young person and want to let the world know about it? Are you tired of rolling your eyes as your professor regurgitates progressive PC neo-Marxist nonsense? Then you should interview on Conduit News Radio's Young Conservative segment and tell us about why you believe the way you do. Tell us how you came to be a conservative and what are your views on government. Now, if you're worried that your neo-Marxist professor may also be a right-wing talk radio listening masochist, then names can be changed to protect the innocent. It's the Conduit News Radio Conservative Future segment. To be interviewed, call 870-275-9799. That's 870-275-9799. If you're like me, you believe that small business is the heart of Arkansas's economic engine, and it should be viewed that way by the politicians in Little Rock. Conduit for Commerce also believes, like you and I believe, policies that achieve less regulation and lower taxation help small business in Arkansas thrive. Other policies like small, constitutionally consistent government and reducing citizen dependency on government keeps it from growing and expanding its influence on our daily lives. Conduit for Commerce works every day to educate the general public and legislators on these important priorities in the name of Arkansas Small Business. By the way, contributions to Conduit for Commerce are tax deductible. Log on now to conduitforcommerce.org and click on Contact Us on the right side of the page. That's conduitforcommerce.org. Go there now and learn the facts on protecting small business in Arkansas. tax burden is one of the very highest in America, uh, that's a real burden on taxpayers. And we, that is just something where we have to control government growth, I think, to keep whatever tax we choose, uh, keep it in a competitive range. And I think that's really the secret of the nine states that go without personal income taxes, because you would think that they would have extremely high sales taxes across the board, and some of them do. But on average, those states without income taxes spend about $1,000 less per person than the states with income taxes. So the secret, I think, to their success is they keep more of a limited government framework. New York and Florida, two perfect examples to discuss here. They're roughly the exact same size and population, yet Florida spends half as much in its the annual budget than New York spends. That's the secret for why Florida can afford to go without a personal income tax and why New York is stuck with the highest income taxes in America. Wow. Yeah, and I see here, you know, you referenced Arkansas sales tax burden in your report, 47. Uh, it... Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell is building a liberty machine. Find out more at conduitnews.com. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. Um, one second, let me move my chair over here. How did that go further? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm off my mark. I'm off the mark. We got new digs, sort of, not just kind of rearranged a little bit. Um, telephone number 870-275-979. I want to once again thank Chad Neal for coming by the studio, sharing a little bit about um, this lawsuit against Senator Cooper. Uh, I find it interesting because... Um, I just, I really think it comes down to that, that, that you have actual conservatives in the Craighead County Republican Committee. I, I think that's what it comes down to. And, um, it, it, uh, th I think that's why Senator Cooper, um, you know, allegedly has done these things. Of course, I mean, he sent the letters. He's, that, that's not, there's nothing alleged about that. That actually happened. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, folks, we're broadcasting over at Facebook.com slash Conduit News. That's Facebook.com slash Conduit News as well as the YouTube channel. Do us a favor. Go to the YouTube channel if you don't mind and uh, click the subscribe button and then click the little bell to receive notifications. That would really help us um, going forward. So um, can we go to this Hill report uh, from back in 2018 and let's click on uh, let's click on Chuck Schumer what did Chuck Schumer have to say April a year ago what did Chuck Schumer have to say a year ago you see this tweet uh, Joe that the video here the second one 
I, I can't I can't see anything. So, yes, uh, yeah, not that one. The one right below it. That one right there with Chuck Schumer. Let's listen to what Chuck Schumer said a year ago. Listen to this. I go through these details because it's important to understand that yesterday's events could only have been the result of a rigorous legal process with checks every step of the way and with a very high burden of proof. And yet, last night, President Trump said the FBI raid, raid was a disgrace, part of a witch hunt, an attack on our country, and mentioned that many people have encouraged him to fire Mr. Mueller. We'll see what happens, he concluded. Let's break this down. The president suggests that the latest events are part of a partisan conspiracy against him. I'd remind the president that the source of the referral, special counsel Mueller, is a lifelong Republican. The deputy attorney general who signed off on the referral, Rod Rosenstein, is a Republican this, this, appointed this, by President Trump. He, he'll now the use attorney this general, against the Jeff Mueller Sessions, report. A Republican <laughs> appointed a year by President Trump. And the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District in New York, which sought a search warrant based on that information, is a Republican appointed by President Trump. The agents in New York who carried out the seizure are on the direction of Christopher Wray, Stop. a Republican. All right, that's uh, Chuck Schumer. Uh, now, he, he's doing that in defense of the legitimacy of, uh, of Mueller, right? And uh, now I just have this, now that William Barr is going to have hold a press conference, uh, according to reports, it's at 930. It doesn't say Eastern or not. If it's 930 Eastern, that'd be in 30 minutes. Uh, William Barr is going to hold a press conference going over the Mueller report he's releasing today. Rod Rosenstein going to be right next to him. And uh, let's go ahead and hit up this headline from September 21st of 2018. Headline, Firing Rosenstein Would Cross a Red Line Drawn by Democrats and Resistance Groups Defending the Rule of Law. Better not fire Rod Rosenstein. Remember all this? You better not fire Rod Rosenstein. And now Rod Rosenstein is going to be standing next to Attorney General William Barr as they go over the findings of Robert Mueller. It's... Mueller time, right? Somebody on Facebook, it's Mueller time, but it's also now time to pay the bar tab. Some of these are just a little cheesy. Uh, but the, here, here's here's the thing. Um, the media is in a fight right now, and the Democrats are in a fight because they don't think William Barr should be able to have a press conference before the Mueller report is released. The media wants the Mueller... See, the media doesn't want to cover what what Barr has to say because they already know what he has to say. He wrote a four-page memo. They don't want to hear any more of that. They don't want to be forced to cover that. The media wants to get the page. They want to skim through it. They want to get a digital copy of it, control F, and just search for keywords. Obstruction. And then let's, let's find all the obstruction references anytime it mentions obstruction. And then let's point out that William Barr risked his entire career and let's attempt to say that he lied in his uh, little summary that he did of the report that he lied he 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 was that, that William Barr was so stupid that he he went ahead and lied for the president knowing full well that eventually the full report would come out and he would be exposed they're going to cherry pick this and I want to tell you one more time I said this in the first hour you can't believe anything the media mainstream media reports on this and you and you shouldn't at least you should not believe anything that they report on this because they have lied to you for the last 18 months or longer uh, that Donald Trump is really a KGB agent I mean they haven't come out and said that but you know they that's the the gist they've lied to you um, they've attempted to ensnare the president in obstruction the only real Russian collusion was uh, Hillary uh, and the Democrats colluding with uh, a former British spy, Christopher Steele. We, we really need to hope, 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 hope that it's a former British spy because if he was a current British spy, that would be really, really awkward, wouldn't it? Are you ever really a former spy of any country? Like if you're in the espionage business and if you're the, you know, you work for, if you spy for the U.S. government or you spy for, uh, you know, for uh, the British government. Are you ever really a former spy? Just a question. Honest question. 
I think you know the answer to it. Telephone number 870-275-9799. I mean, Lisa Page, Peter Strzok, uh, James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Rod Rosenstein also. I mean, according to the New York Times, he wanted to wear a wire. They discussed it. But I think Rod Rosenstein is kind of like, uh, at this point, he's like, um, yeah, I can kind of see where this uh, where this ship is going. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy to stand next to William Barr. Yeah, Rod Rosenstein is now defending William Barr, by the way. I forgot to point that important piece of information out. Rod Rosenstein is now defending the integrity of the Attorney General of the United States, William Barr. This press conference might be huge. It might be a nothing burger, but it also might be huge. Be listening for it. You might want to go watch the press conference of William Barr for yourself when you get to your uh, desk. Um, you don't want to depend on the mainstream media to tell you what William Barr said. You need to go listen to what William Barr said himself. And then instead of uh, waiting on the media to tell you what the 400-page report said, Maybe you can trust some sources, but maybe go get the report. It'll be available at some point, and then you can read the redacted. The, the Washington Post reports lightly redacted. Folks, Arkansas, be safe. We'll see you tomorrow for Johnny Cash Friday. Thank you so much for listening. We can't do this without your support. Visit us on patreon.com slash CNR.